Welcome everyone. In this video, we'll look at a practical to investigate the cooling of a substance. I will also explain how data from the experiment can be used to find rates of cooling as well as the melting point range of the substance. Cooling curves are studied in Unit 2 of BTEC Applied Science courses, Practical Scientific Procedures and Techniques. Let's get started. This is the method that we used. A boiling tube containing about 5 grams of stearic acid was used. The boiling tube was placed in a beaker of freshly boiled water until the stearic acid completely melted. Next, the boiling tube was removed from the hot water. A temperature probe was inserted into the stearic acid. The probe was connected to a data logger and the data logger was connected to a computer. The data logging software application is shown on the computer screen in the photograph on the right. We set the data logger to record as many readings as possible. The temperature was recorded automatically approximately every 7 seconds. We recorded the temperature until no further cooling occurred. Data loggers are very versatile and useful pieces of kit. Many different types of probe are available other than temperature probes, for example pH, light or dissolved oxygen. Data loggers enable scientists to analyse lots of data without having to take readings manually. The data can be exported as a file and imported into spreadsheet software such as Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. An excerpt of the data produced is shown on the right. This experiment took over an hour to complete and nearly 700 separate temperature and time readings were taken. The results from the data logger were imported into a spreadsheet package and these results were used to construct the cooling curve for stearic acid. Cooling curves like this one can be used to work out the melting points of a substance and the rates of cooling at different points in time. You may have noticed that I have not started a scale on the y-axis with a temperature equal to 0 degrees Celsius. I have started at 20 degrees Celsius. This means that I am using as much space as possible to show the data points related to the experiments. When you plot graphs, ensure that your data points, not the axes, take up at least half of the graph paper. At the beginning of the experiments, highlighted in yellow, the stearic acid cools very quickly. Heat is transferred from the stearic acid to the surroundings. At this stage, the stearic acid is a liquid. We can work out the initial rate of cooling by drawing a tangent when time is equal to zero seconds. The graph has been annotated in red. The hypotenuse of the right angle triangle can be used to find the gradient at t is equal to zero. A larger triangle will be more accurate when working out gradients. It is a good idea to annotate the points that you use to calculate the gradients on the graph with their coordinates. The initial rate of cooling is found by change in temperature divided by change in time. This works out to be minus 0 0.108 degrees Celsius per second. Units are essential. Every second the substance cools by 0 0.108 degrees Celsius. The minus sign tells us that the substance is cooling down. When the stearic acid solidifies, energy remains within the substance as intermolecular forces are formed. During solidification, less energy is transferred to the surroundings every second than at the beginning of the experiments. Molecules are arranged in a regular repeating pattern known as a lattice when stearic acid is in the solid state. Intermolecular forces in the gaseous and liquid states are much weaker and the molecules can move around at random. This portion of the graph is known as a plateau and helps us to identify the transition between liquid and solid states. The rate of cooling here is much slower. You can find out more about what is happening here by researching latent heat of crystallization. The melting point, or melting point range, can be determined from the plateau. The melting point range for stearic acid is between 42.0 degrees Celsius and 51.0 degrees Celsius for our sample. This is much lower than the reference value. I'm sure you can look this up yourselves on the internet. This is not entirely unexpected. A large melting point range that is lower than the data value indicates that a substance might not be pure. We could repeat this experiment with a fresh sample of stearic acid that we know to be pure and compare the results. After the stearic acid solidifies, it begins to cool again until it reaches room temperature. When the substance reaches 24.0 degrees Celsius, no further cooling occurs. From this, we can conclude that the temperature of the room, 
i.e. room temperature, is 24.0 degrees Celsius. We can calculate the rate of cooling after solidification has taken place by using another tangent. I have chosen a time of 1400 seconds. I have annotated the graph in red. We can calculate the rate of cooling in the same way. Rate of cooling is equal to change in temperature divided by change in time. The rate of cooling at this point in time works out to be minus 0 0.019 degrees Celsius per second. Finally, let's compare the initial rate of cooling to the rate of cooling after solidification at a time of 1400 seconds. We can see that the later rate of cooling is much slower. The large difference between the temperature of the substance and room temperature at the beginning of the experiments leads to a faster rate of cooling. After solidification, the rate of cooling decreases until it finally stops cooling altogether when room temperature has been reached. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video useful. Please don't hesitate to post in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions. I'd also like to thank Ken and Dai for helping me put this video together. Take care and good luck with your studies.